Hello, this is Haka Dabin, and I am here with SCP-4812. I have number SCP-4812. This, this SCP file is uh, level 4, a secret SCP. The containment class is uh, unknown. The disruption class, however, is Eki. A level 4, and the risk class is also level 4 at danger. <sighs> Destination memorandum. Due to the unique nature of SCP 4812S, E and K's relationships. A single object designation is used to the net of the three entities as a group. However, each are considered their own individual anomalies and are described within this file as such. Classification Asian um, Memorandum. Due to the unique nature of SCP 48. A 12 S, E, and K, a, each entity has been assigned an individual containment class. This is kind of obvious, as S is safe, E is Euclid, and K is Keter. This should have been a given. And the fourth one is unknown. Anyway. Updated it contained a memorandum. For Foundation Protocol 251399, the ongoing containment of 4812 has been transferred to the jurisdiction of Project Paragon. All other extant containment procedures remain in place. Hmm. <sighs> Special containment procedures SCP 4812S or the safe one, is contained at its location of discovery. The address's cave, if containing this is a safe one, is to be sealed by three maximum security vault doors. Entrance to SCP-4812 as a site of containment is forbidden to any individuals without proper credentials. Under no circumstances should SCP-4812-S be exposed to any amount of light. SCP-4812-S is to be interacted with only by members of the fully blind MTF Vestas 12 Northern Star. Under or no circumstances for, should SCP 4812S be exposed to either SCP 4812E or SCP 4812K. SCP 4812E is contained with a thermally a controlled vault at Site 80. Due to the nature of SCP 4812, of these anomalous capabilities, its containment chamber must be kept at a constant 1400 degrees Celsius. SCP-4812-E itself is contained within a tank of molten iron. Direct maintenance of SCP-4812-E's containment chamber must take place outside the cell due to the intense heat within. Special remote drones equipped with at half um, kyber arbide exteriors are to be used in maintaining the interior of SCP-4812-E's containment shell. A drop in initial temperature of more than 50 degrees Celsius must be considered a breach of containment. We already know that none of these anomalies should be interacting with each other. SV4812K is currently uncontained. Due to the location and nature of SV4812K, it is unlikely that its existence will be exposed, but caution must be taken in ensuring that any information pertaining to the entity is suppressed. Foundation information and security assets are to monitor web traffic for any images, accounts, or recordings of SCP-4812-K. Further research into the nature of SCP-4812-K is required to prevent accidental exposure should the entity present itself on Earth once again. Description. SCP-4812 is a group designated for or three anomalous is, uh, entities, S, E, and K. In a series of recovered documents, 
SV 48.12.1 that describe them. S is a large and amorphous entity located in a subterranean cave near Alice, France. S is attached to the walls of the cavern by a large number of long adhesive of covered appendages that extend out of the main mass of the entity. Similar, similar appendages cover S if you forty eight uh, cover or S's entire body. Though the majority are caught rolled and tucked up to its central all mass, each of the appendages and indeed at S's entire body is covered in fine hydrophobic hair. S is a class as 13 visual hazard. Any living being that perceives S visually will experience a violent biological overreaction that is invariably fatal. Direct visual perception of S is akin to exposure of the eyes, brain, and nervous system to an extremely caustic acid. The effect of S is immediate and cannot be avoided once exposed. Victims will experience severe pain bleed through the skin and orifices, paralysis, asphyxiation, and eventually death. The effect for Ursus across all visual media as images and video recordings of S can carry the same effect, though slightly less immediate and violent. Due to the nature of S, it is unknown on what the entity's true appearance is. Individuals interacting with S must do so in total darkness, wearing airtight suits that as even the minute an imperceptible amount of light naturally made by human beings is enough to trigger the effect of S. It is unknown how light interacts with the surface of S, as any individual who has looked at it for any amount of time has already died. Even the hairs on S's body when shaved off and exposed to light create a similar, albeit lessened, effect. Oh wow, there are four of these I miss? Which is usually severe nausea, uh, hallucination, swelling of the eyes and brain. As the main body of the e e entity, as his ability is contained by darkness, as humans are capable of interacting with the with the entity if they cannot perceive it visually. Beyond being an extreme and anomalous visual hazard, S is otherwise immobile and does not appear to react or touch or to touch or noise. As his body is composed of organic matter, though spectral analysis has not been possible due to the nature of S's anomalous makeup, it is believed that S is a tender like appendages extend deep into the earth around the cavern in which it is contained. Though proper analysis of this has been difficult. Whew. SP4812E, hereby known as E, is a large humanoid, 15 meters in height, an entity composed primarily of platinum with traces of tungsten and other metallic compounds. These features are vaguely skeletal in appearance, though when in containment they are not invisible due to the effect of height temperature on its metallic body. E is a near perfect heat sink. The temperature of of its body when uncontained maintains a constant in point three zero 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 three one K. I am not actually saying all those zeros. I'm not sure if I said enough or if I said too many. E does not experience in thermal exchange instead of acting in a way that would react to eventually reach thermal equilibrium. E absorbs energy at net loss to its surroundings. The rate at which this occurs is extremely rapid and E is capable of reducing a 10 by a 10 by 10 nmeter containment cell at room temperature to near absolute zero in roughly 16 seconds. Due to this, E is continuously surrounded by an opaque field of frozen air and water, and its true appearance is impossible to see unless exposed to high temperatures. Exposure to E is it's nearly invariably lethal. Surfaces that are exposed to E usually still come in seconds as the temperature of the air around them plummets and the water within their bodies freezes. Even in heavily insulated protective suits will only allow the wearer moments of protection for the effects of exposure. E E's effect may be mitigated, however, by exposure to extreme heat while 
is in fact it's rapid and it would contain if exposed to extremely high temperatures is in fact weakened substantially. This is made an E containable so long as the entity is contained under constant high temperatures. SCP-4812K is a massive silver-winged insectoid bearing similarities to both stag beetles and scorpions. K is roughly 180 meters in length, with, seven, with six appendages, the forward two leading to large arch pincers and a long cemented, segmented tail and pointed serrated barb. However, in place of insectoid mouth and eyes, K has the face of a man no longer than that of a typical human and male. As such, its face is dwarfed by the rest of its body. K has four wings that extend out of its back, and its entire body is covered in a thick, highly reflective biological chitin. I'm not sure if I said that right. I never know. I think it might be kin, chin, kain. I'm not sure. K spends the overwhelming majority of its time in the upper stratosphere, where it rarely moves in any perceptible way, except to flap its wings to maintain alt altitude. The existence of K was not realized until the discovery of SCP-48-812-1, or I guess S, due in part to OK's near invisibility. And its higher rate of speed as it travels. K routinely reaches speeds in excess of 800 kilometers an hour, K does not respond to attempts to communicate with it and will engage vehicles that draw too close to it within roughly 700 meters. Several attempts have been made to secure K in order to move it to, into to a containment cell. However, all attempts thus far are, have failed. Fire jets and removal assault drones have been able to keep pace with the entity but are easily incapacitated by the entity's raw physical strength and size. Additionally, the weapon used on K it to date has been able to damage it in any perceptible way. On the contrary, it has the entity seemingly rebounds with the same kinetic en energy as it did on, on approach. The researchers believe that K is in some way a near perfect reflector. Addendum 48121 SCP 48121 is a series of recovered documents and artifacts recovered from a collection of anomalous items previously held by Dutch collector Marcus de Wees before his death. This collection, given the name the Huntington Set, likely named after 18th century English archaeologist and occultist as Winston J. A. Huntington. Those research which led Foundation agents to the discovery of SCP-2254, SCP blank, SCP blank, and SCP e blank. Because it's the following items: sixteen coins of various shapes and sizes, none of which it account for any known denomination of currency. Five papyrus scrolls, Egyptian in origin, that appear to be ancient star maps. Analysis of these maps indicate that there were once notes written in the margins. However, these notes have been bleached out and are no longer decipherable. Three large tomes, bound in leather-wrapped hardwood, penned in German, full of what appears to be archaic coordinates. One of the books also marks changes in temperature. These books were seemingly written over the course of many years. A brass, spy a brass spyglass with a cracked crystal or lens. A piece of the cracked lens is missing. Looking through the spyglass, several a small ornate it mechanisms are visible within, however, they appear to have been damaged in the past and are no longer functional. <sighs> a thick burlap sack that apparently contains at least three more consecutive uh, burlap sacks with a thick gelatinous mass in its center. Looking at the sack, tends to make subjects feel ill and suffer from a slight burning sensation behind the eyes. A pair of glasses with iron frames and solid iron lenses. One of the lenses is damaged. When worn by human subjects, a, si a light glow is visible through the iron lenses when looking at the burlap sack. A thin circlet made of gold and platinum has three prongs situated around the entire ring, two of which appear to have been broken off near the base. The third contains a small glass sphere, and 
uh, it's warm to the touch. A journal written by I. Winston J. Cunnington contains the pictures of all three SCP-4812 entities and the personal research of Dr. Cunningham himself. Of the three atoms containing coordinates, the second has a short section written in Italian by presumably a different author than the rest of the tome. The second tome is really the, to be the only tome that and has a single author. The beginning of the section is a list of names. Names and dates with an orthodox saying system. Many of the dates are written and with another a number beside the year, such as 133 89. Let's next to the name. And Torno Old of Yair. After the list of names it comes a section where the author appears to have been listing notes to include in the longer section that comes afterward. The translated text of the longer section is available below. Obviously, we're going to access it. Of all those old kingdoms and empires whose names were lost to the passing of time or to the cruel mechanisms of their enemies, perhaps none is greater or spoken with more respect than that of the great house of Hollyan on the sky kings of old Europe. The first of the those great kings, Hagen and one von Apollyon, is said to have descended from the blood of the King of Crimson Eyes, often called S.M., the first Earth man, a legendary figure in the writings of the three, the Archmeisters of King Richard, the Lionheart's court, the sky. The text cuts off abruptly here, but continues in the next paragraph. I made his, his, and Marcus made at the end of that line as to note it for revision. The Sky Kings are said to have ruled Old Europe for a gen for a hundred generations, though they face opposition from the Deva to the east and those faithful to the Iron God in the south. Their kingdom never faltered, and their conquests were fruitful. It was the conquered foes of the House of Apollyon, and who named the f who first named the king Idas is one von Apollyon Sky King, for it was said his reach extended past the bounds of the earth and into the heavens above. However, over time came complacency. In the 890th year of their rule, the Sky King Sarah is, is the eighth. If von Napoleon is said to have grown bored with ruling and demanded a conquest of another greater realm beyond their own. In his arrogance, he looked past the lands of man and towards the most across the sea where the fair folk were said to live. Yes, the fair folk are also known as the Fae of uh, SCP-4000, I mean the forest that shall not be named. The Sky King boarded his ships and with the largest army ever assembled, drove up with fury across the waves toward the continent to the west. The fair folk, consumed with their own conflicts with the emergent and power of the Children of the Moon, or the Children of the Night, which is SV-1000, also known as Bigfoot, to the south, did not expect the arrival of Apollyon, and were consumed in a fortnight, their people scattered and their nobility stripped down and mutilated. In accordance with the customs of the conquerors, only a single survivor of the of brutality, a fey princess, was brought back in iron chains across the sea to suffer further horrors. The princess, though, had no intentions of arriving on the old on the far shores of old Europe. As the king's fleet passed the great eye of the sea, she cast a wicked and wild spell upon the house of Apollyon, and the Sky King in particular. As a storm came upon them and brought many men and ships to the bottom of the sea, the princess prayed to an old and nameless god for vengeance upon her captors. Legend set as the princess's iron chains caught fire and burned the king's flesh up to cinders. And that Sarius the Eighth himself was dragged into the deep by those same chains as he tried to throw them overboard. The fleet, however, did return to Old Europe, where the young Sarius the Ninth, von Apollyon, now ruled his father's kingdoms. As much reached for the curse the princess had cast upon his father, Sarius the Ninth threw the princess into a dungeon deep.
beneath the earth and buried it, leaving her to rot eternally in the darkness. Afterwards, as a bulwark against the dark magics of the fair folk that his father's conquest may have brought upon his house, Cyrus and I appointed four great knights to defend his kingdom. They were Lahire the Fierce, Lancelot the Conqueror, Hector the Stalwart, and Ogier the Faithful. But the princess. The text ends here, and no con additional continuation of this narrative has yet been discovered. While many of the other items are generally unremarkable, a particular interest to researchers is the Journal of Dr. Cunningham, of Dr. Cunning Connington. I could not say that name right. I keep on saying cutting it, even though I don't know why. The majority of the text in the journal is written in a cipher, with very few sections, usually small notes that are not relevant to the rest of the text, that are written in German. A few short sections have been translated due to a section of the cipher being dis being inscribed on the inside of one of the largest tomes. The text contained there and has been translated and is available below. The architect, the architect of, the, of that great house named the first of the great ape profanities in the six chapters of the reign of King Cyrus IX of Napoleon, when he wrote, Sorrowful was the sky king Napoleon when the voice of the enemy beneath the earth spoke to the souls of his knights. And he did banish him Amich, the long night settled over his kingdom, and the winter winds came from the east, but Hector did not answer. Down from the far darkness came the Volva, came the Venex, what they called the Profane Restrictor, the first of the great profanities. The Venu Venex cast a cold hand across the king's only daughter, and in her youth and weakness she did die. The king took upon him the godless lance and came down to the even new Venex and with nothing and but the mount and its height between in him and the infinite cold, drove that sacred spear into the even new Venex and put it into the flaming heart of earth. This, I think that's a reference to one, the sphere of the non believer, and two, E, 4812E, I mean. <sighs> the star in my abs vexed me, but tracing them in the sky and following the movement of the a star that cannot be you seen, I caught for a moment, a moment a glimpse of the, the face. Is of the one that Lahir had called the, the profane adamant. The text does not uh, name it, but the devil to the east had a name for that star. What they called the Lament Nullet, or the King of Many Faces. Three accounts of the origin or master of the Deva King described in the Lament Nullet. The profane adamant and the tongue of the great house appearing as if from a space beyond the spaces to the kingdom's ruination. He writes the following. The binders of blood made empty packs with empty gods against the hollow Elemanelet, and they were cut down. The singer of songs had their voices pulled from their throats, and the legions of their twilight right, armies broke their er, first broke their spears against Elemanelet, its hide, and in their bodies. And when they had been ground into dust, as when the profane and adamant shattering steps, it took their faces and returned to the skies. Of note, the author here sometimes writes the name Last Ancelot when it seems as if Amenolent would be more appropriate. This may be a mistake or, mi or a mistranslation. The last of the profanities that lay upon the e e doom of the House of Apollyon was one with no depiction in any text save for a black smear. This was the King of Horrors, the profane dark. The one that festered the enemy is grave until it soaked through the earth and burst forth like a fetid tide. The curse on the Sky King's lips as it pulled on him into the void called this great terror Yash, the last foe of man. Without Lahir's sword, Lancelot's mace, Hector's spear, or Ogier's fate, 
the full might of the soul and sorrow was brought out to bear on Apollyon's broken heart, which shattered with its ruined kingdom. Wrath, he spoke. Wrath, wrath, wrath. I have seen the face of the Illuminalit, though only for a moment, and know the fiery chasm in which the even the next seeds, but I dare not seek out Yashi for fame dark. The last scroll of the writing of the oh wait, of the writings of Cecil says, but the eyes of Yashi offer, offer no release into that, only the winding roads of Tarman that leap into the polar of eyes and sharp nerve spines. Where no man returns and no voices are heard. The castle of fire, the king of crimson sea skies, the reaper of dreams flee from the eyes of Rash of Yash. The last scream of the nameless folk beyond the e sea. Men scream out and are silenced. The light of the sun invites order to the most fundamental nature of this world, and the Yash abhor abhors it. Rat, rat, rat. Addendum 4812-2, containment and of uh, SC4812 entities, also known as the a great profanities, as we pretty much just heard, which would be the, what were they called again? Oh yeah, I think they were called, um... I think the profane restrictor, the profane and adamant, and the profane dark. Anyway, the containment of uh, the profane advent, or K, has been known. K has been unknown to the Foundation since 1964, when it was confused for an experimental U.S. Air vehicle while crossing over the northern USSR. After being engaged by Soviet fighters over the Uchukchi Sea, AK rapidly ascended into the stratosphere heights, ascended to stratospheric heights, and disappeared from sight entirely. Shortly thereafter, the, the re engaged the fighters at high speeds, quickly destroying them. Since then, K has only been detected on a handful of occasions, usually while passing low enough to be detected. Visibly, visually, Due to distortions caused by light reflecting against its its chitinous its exterior. Yeah, that sounds a lot uh, more correct. Yeah, notably, K appears to follow a vague path, often passing over the containment sites of both S and E, as well as the unknown C addendum of forty eight four. The significance of this is not is. Uh, not, not actually see the 48824. E was discovered shortly after the acquisition of uh, this SCP. When a foundation discovery a team investigating a set of coordinates moved within the north, and the third tome um, discovered a thermal anomaly beneath a lake near unknown on location. Further investigation of this site is of the earth and opened a small fissure beneath the lake which drained the lake water into the opening. Shortly afterwards, the site experienced a significant drop in temperature as E, which had previously been trapped in a thermal vent beneath the lake, ascended to the surface. The discovery team immediately evacuated the site and MTF Arc 11, Lyam Up, was scrambled to the site to engage the SCP to engage the E, e entity. However, due to the rapid falling temperatures and increasingly dangerous as atmospheric conditions being generated at this site, MTF Arc 11 was forced to maintain distance and use the long range artillery, artillery weapons to impede the progress of E as it marched towards the nearest population and center. After several hours of shelling over 8 kilometers of land, E was finally contained with it when a controlled gas explosion was generated near the entity, followed by an immediate drop of molten slag over it and by a remote carrier drone. The slag covering A was moved into an at, into a mobile electro electromagnetic kiln and transported to the thermal control deep well or vault at site eighty. 
<sighs> as was included in the notes of the Foundation Administrator Frederick Rollingham's as location of interest and has been at least vaguely understand, understood since the formation of Foundation for Ecosur called Investigation Groups. Prior to the Foundation involvement, it was not known that S was an entity at all, and since many groups believed the cave itself was hazardous to travelers, as none who entered were ever heard from again. <sighs> Addendum 48123 SCP 4812K Hostile Activity On June 9, 2002, three months after the discovery and containment of SCP of E and K or the profane adamant was observed a very of its anticipated path towards an area in the North Sea. A foundation carrier division was diverted to the area where the profane admin had engaged with the global occult or elition and transport ship. The entity, which was unfazed by the conventional weaponry on board the EGLC vessel, appeared to be attempting to breach the exterior of the ship. Of note, K A had never previously been observed making this sort of unprovoked hostile well, action, especially at such a low altitude. The Foundation Carrier Group immediately engaged in the and after a short skirmish, drove it away from the transport ship. The Foundation Carrier Group offered assistance to the GOC vessel, but this assistance was denied and the vessel continued on its course north. Satellite imagery showed the vessel docking in the previously undisclosed port in northern Norway. This incident corresponded with two of other events involving in E and S. Throughout the skirmish, K with at K, E became increasingly active with its containment vessel at one point, assessing the activation of previously untested technology to further increase the temperature within the deep well or vault to stabilize the entity. At the same time, several tremors were felt near the S site, and seismographs of the area revealed that a large portion of the cave system had collapsed. Later observation and of the site indicates that S had moved upwards no less than 70 meters. <sighs> and then 48124, Secure Correspondence. Note, the following data entry is Level 4, 4812, Classified with Restrictions. Appropriate clearances are required to access this file. So we're going to access it right now because we always have those, those clearances. The following secure transmission was received by Operative Intelligence Command at Site 88 after the events described in the end of 48.12.3. The message was received under the identification credentials of GLC Commander Daniel Daniela Met. Secure transmission. Do not disseminate. Global Cult Coalition okay. Central Command. Notice. By the authority of the United Nations Security Council and the Global Cult Coalition, you are for hereby forbidden from further involvement into any supernatural activity involving three specific paranormal activities. GC-92201, codename Mars. A massive winged Scorpio and Entity with a metallic exterior. GC 92202, codenamed Pluto. A large human like entity that dramatically alters the total energy of the system directly surrounding it. GC 2203, codenamed Eros. A small, partially mummified, and vaguely human like entity currently in possession of Global Code Coalition Task Force Omni 45. The SCP-4812 research team does not believe that this is one of the three entities described in SCP-4812. If anything, it might be the fairy princess that everyone's been looking for. Whew. Based on information received by our agents, it is likely that you have the Pluto entity in containment at one of your facilities. You are instructed to immediately make all efforts to destroy this entity beyond its ability to self-repair or regenerate. As directed by the Sky King in directive, you are to also turn any information you have regarding this entity and either of the two other two entities is described above. A 
Attach. Memorandum of intent from GLC Commander are, are met. I figure you're at least somewhat aware of the, the circumstances involved here. It's likely you were the ones who ran off, off with Con Huntington's estate. So you have pieces that we don't have. Chances are, are, are that goes the other way too, since nobody has come asking for what we found in the Archduke's vault. I think it's also probably likely that you were the ones who dug up a Pluto, and now you've got other stash somewhere hot. That's good, but there are more steps we need to take. Ache now. I applaud you for staying ahead of the curve so far. From what we've read, Pluto is a son of a person. I wouldn't want to be the one to figure out how to fit him in a box. Here's a long intro of it. The big flying guy, the one we call Mars. We all know the Russians were the first to find it and when it knocked those birds out of the sky back in the 60s. What you might not know is that they managed to get a tracker around it, a communicator, and we've been able to watch where it's going for oh, or the last few years. It's looking for something. The way we figure, there are, are three of these things, right? They call them profanities. You have one, now we have one, and Mars is the third. But the right is recover said, hey, it's looking for something else. It's looking for... Whoever cursed these things into existence. Now I found Pluto when you dug it out of the ground, so that's one. Our arrows, the entity, if it exists at all, is not SCP-4812 S E or K. It found when we un when we accidentally yard unearthed it a few years ago as well. So there's two. It's the third, and now it's looking for the boss. We've been keeping an eye on it. And, and for the past few months, and it seems like to be saving some place in France. If you don't have people searching under every rock out there to find this thing, you need to. We do. Our records say it's some sort of woman and somewhere underground. We thought it might have been arrows at first, but the thing with that guy was too small to be a human woman. The physiology is all, all wrong, too. Couldn't it be the fairy, though? And we need to make sure that. Mars doesn't find this control entity. We think we can hurt if we kill Eros. And you might be able to do the same if you kill Pluto. They're all connected, we figure. At least that's what the literature implies. Eros ha really has been a bit a, a pain to try and kill, though. So if you have any idea as, as there, we're willing to listen. You should do the same with yours. It's strange, though, isn't it? Mars coming down like that to get at Eros. I wonder why it never did that with Pluto. And why does it keep circling those fields in France? Met. Addendum 48.12.5 Internal Memo We've confirmed what uh, we fear. They don't know it, but they found her. We have teams currently en route to with the SCP-4812-S site. We're going to dump 50 meters of lead and concrete on top of it. It's going to it'll be your job to find a way to shoot that thing out of the sky. Get to work. From Lament. <sighs> and that is SCP-4812. Something known as the Three Profanities. And it looks like the GLC has the fairy princess. And they're trying to, well, destroy her. Whew. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like on the video. Or comment down below and subscribe to the channel. There are a few videos between here and and what I want to actually cover, but it seems like a lot of them might need the context given in 4840. So the next video will be 4840. Anyway, I'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye!